That's your happy hour afternoon uh, show, Mix it, at 3. It starts at 3. Exactly. I think I said it backwards, but uh, you get the idea of what I was trying to say. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Cliff and Nat. We hope you're doing well today. Yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, doing all right. Tuesday going yeah. pretty well so far. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, your Tuesday is not a Monday 2.0. Uh, mm. So things are doing pretty well. Um, we a little cold. I kind of like it. Yeah. It's about time. I and I know people are going to go, oh, it lasts for a week, and then they're going to start complaining and everything. I like the jacket weather, personally. Uh, yeah, being from Brazil, you know <laughs> that I like summer, and I like hot weather. So. Well, and you see, that's the thing. My wife, she, she's from Pennsylvania. She mm -hmm. loves the winter. We, look, we try to go up there whenever it snows, so we get a couple of days. And she says she loves it, but then two days into it, two or three days into it, oh, we got to go back. Yeah. Because we just don't have that much here. So... Um, what we're trying to say is, no, there is no chance of snow coming up, so you'll be fine with that. <laughs> uh, maybe a chance of rain on Friday, but otherwise it's going to yeah. be looking pretty good later on this pretty weekend good, good. for any outdoor activities you have for the fall. Mm -hmm. The fairs are coming. They're uh, going to be in town, so be sure you check those out, too. So many things happening in town. Yeah, love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, i got a lot of stuff going on today. It yeah. is, uh, is it Pasta Day? World Pasta Day? It's National Pasta Day. It's National Pasta Day. It's National Pasta Month. We might dance on the show today. No. Well, maybe. <laughs> One more happy hour drinking. We'll be fine to go with that. Okay. Yes. Let's go ahead and get started up. Speaking of that, Coca-Cola Company yeah. uh, and Pernod Ricard today announced a global relationship to debut Absolute Vodka and Sprite. They're going to have these as a ready-to-drink pre-mixed cocktail. These will be available as of uh, 2024. Sounds good to me. So vodka is one of the most popular bases for alcohol ready to drink products. And lemon lime soft drinks are one of the most popular mixers in pre-mixed cocktails. So they're going to begin selling in Europe uh, early next year and then in the U.S. Uh, not too long after that. The Distilled Spirits Council of the U.S. found uh, ready to drink beverages. They are the fastest growing spirits category. Yeah. Uh, you know, which I'm, and I can honestly understand that. Um, Post-pandemic, people are going back out, they're tailgating, they're having good times. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, you want to carry like multiple bottles if you're going to a party or, or something. Uber, by the way. Yes. Uh, you, you just take, take the pre-made stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I like those kind of things, so yeah. I cannot wait to try when they have it. I'm not a big beer fan. Yeah, no, I've said that on the show. I love wine, but I also like the, the seltzers and stuff like that. My only my only issue with this is they're pre-made. Yeah. So they're already set up the way that they are. Sometimes people like it a little lighter. True. Sometimes people like it a little stronger. It is yeah. what it is. But, uh, yeah, just based on the price of what it could be, yeah, that yeah. worked out pretty well. All right, researchers. Ooh, check this out. It's always got something to do. This thing, that, this Mona Lisa never goes away. Researchers yeah. have found a rare minimal, mineral compound in uh, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. A team of scientists in France and Britain detected this compound using X-ray diffraction and infrared. The compound, known as plomonocrite, was found in the base layer of the paint, according to a new study. So it's an innovative way to help paint dry faster, but hasn't been known to have been used until two centuries later. Hmm. That could be another example of the genius of Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, the study was recently published in the Journal of the American Chemical Society. So this is the first time researchers have found that particular compound in works from the Italian Renaissance. So, yeah, uh, this is weird because it wasn't really even used until about 200 years after the Mona yeah. Lisa was painted. That's so impressive. Okay, time so, travel, everybody. What Something's is the name again on. of the compound? Oh, no. <laughs> Plamonocrite. Good job. Don't you think I practiced that before we went live on TV? <laughs> good job, good job. Yes, it's innovative, as a matter of fact. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, yeah, boy. Okay. <laughs> you should see it when the commercials are going on, folks. All right, it's a musical treat coming up here at Mix Out 3, uh, highlighting another local talent. And if you're a fan of the Rat Pack, well, you just might be surprised what you're about to hear. Stick around. You're going to like this. Mix of 3 will be right back.
Welcome back to Mix It 3. So the influences of Nat King Cole, Dean Martin, Bobby Darin, and of course, most certainly Frank Sinatra. You'll hear those in the tone and style of singer Paul Hughes. So from growing up across the pond to singing on cruise ships worldwide and now living in our area and about to debut a new album, we had a chance to speak with jazz singer Paul Hughes. Check this out. Singer and performer Paul Hughes with us here in the Mix Studios. Hey, Paul. Thank, thank you. Paul. Thank you for so much for having me. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming. The way he I try, I try. But thank you, thank you, Cliff. Appreciate it. Uh, Paul, it's a question we ask every artist who comes on our show. Uh, you know, everybody has that passion. They have a beginning and where they they, they right. got the drive to do what they do. You love this jazz swing genre. Where did this come from? I do, and it all stemmed from my grandfather would sing around the house when I was younger. And actually, a funny story that when I was younger, at all the Christmas parties or any party, in fact, that we was having, he would, uh, my grandfather, my grandmother would put me on a little stool, and I'd sing a bad version of Ness and Dorma that Pavarotti made very famous, and I'd sing all my own words. So that was quite hilarious. They enjoyed that. I think they got a kick out of it. But that led me into this uh, wonderful passion of swing music. And it's all down to my grandfather, really, listening to him sing around the house, yeah. Thanks, Granddad. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, your musicality has taken you all over the world, but um, right. wh how did you end up here in Augusta? <laughs> well, the little story behind that is um, I actually got a call from my agent, and um, I was in Manchester, where I'm from originally, in England, in the UK. Um, and he said, you know, could you come and, and do a show for us in Belize? So I flew to Belize, joined a cruise ship, of course, my lovely wife, Carla Marie Hughes, um, who's been wonderful and she's so supportive of what I do. And we met and that was eight years ago and here we are now. Uh, we've been married for almost uh, eight years now. So it's and great. You and Carla actually sing together as well too, right? We do, we do. Uh, and we've got a show coming up on uh, December 2nd. We don't know where the venue is going to be yet, but um, December 2nd. So uh, please look out on my uh, social media for that. Paul Hughes Official on Instagram. Paul Hughes yeah. Official. Check that out. Uh, now, you're actually working on an album at the same time. How's that going? I am. It's going great. And we recorded. Uh, we're actually halfway through it. And uh, we started recording in 2021, uh, just as COVID was kind of coming to an end. Um, and uh, we managed to go over to Capitol Records, Capitol Studios, and I got to sing on the Frank Sinatra microphone, which was wow. incredible because ever since I was a boy, I've been wanting to uh, kind of sing on that microphone and, uh, you know, Carla had to pinch me because I thought I was dreaming, but <laughs> I achieved it and, uh, you know, it's something that I'll never, ever forget the rest of my life. I can imagine you, you just touch that and just feel... The Sinatra vibe. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a weird thing because they took out like this uh, little archive thing and uh, maybe a save because it's worth millions. And um, I actually have a picture, so maybe another time if, if I come back on, if, you, okay. if I'm lucky enough to have me, uh, we'll do that. Sure. You know, Cliff and I got the chance to hold a Grammy um, some uh, time ago, yeah. and it was pretty amazing. But Singing on a Frank Sinatra microphone? I, know the, oh my God. Yeah. I think there would be more guards around the Sinatra microphone. Than <laughs> there were. I wonder why all these people were gathered around me, but that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul, you were saying you, you were, you were uh, doing uh, cruises and uh, touring worldwide as well. Did any of that touring just kind of affect you musicality? Yeah, you know, I used to kind of slip in. My, my actually, primarily, my show was a swing music, you know, Sinatra, Bobby Darin, who I loved growing up as a, as a young guy. You know, my granddad, you know, I wasn't around then, but my granddad, you know, taught me about it, it, how great Bobby Darin was. But my idol was Frank Sinatra. So I guess, you know, I would slip the odd uh, Sweet Caroline in there or kind of a different, <laughs> like, song the audience would like. So it kind of surprised them. But uh, generally, I stuck to the same lane. And, um, you know, we, we kind of stuck to the swing music to theme it on the ships. All yeah. right. Now, uh, obviously, you can hear the accent being from Manchester. However, yeah. you can't hear it when he sings. And uh, you're about to find out right now because we're going to have Paul sing for us right now. A treat for you. stars are out tonight my thankful arms are holding tightly to the answer to my prayers I can't believe you're here and there's no way that I deserve to even breathe the same air that you're breathing but here I am and here you are and I thank my stars is shining down I stand amazed I'm so astounded 
everything's completely changed my life my luck it all became perfection since you came along all is right that once was wrong but here I am and here you are and I thank my lucky stars what a joy and what a blessing fortune shine down from the heavens something's working in our favor Consolations came together I never even saw one fall I never made a wish at all But here I am and here you are And I thank my lucky star came together never even saw one fall I never made a wish at all but here I am and here you are and I thank my lucky stars oh I thank my lucky stars No attention to the people dancing badly on the side of the stage. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you were better. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you so much, Natalia. Thank Pleasure you. to meet you. So Thank much. you so much. Thank Thank you. You. Where can people follow yes. you online? So, uh, as I mentioned, my uh, you can link to my link tree. And if you go into Paul Hughes Official, that's my Instagram, Facebook, and um, all my link trees there, my dates and everything that I'll be performing. And um, But please go and download the song, My Lucky Stars. It's going to be in a film oh, called uh, Thief of Fallen Stars, which is a kind of romantic. Romantic, a romantic uh, love story film. And it it's better be. Yeah, and it's an <laughs> Italian English speaking movie. So uh, yeah, look out for that in the spring. Great. Thanks for awesome. being on the show, Paul. Yes. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, Claire. Natalia, Thank pleasure you so to meet much. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Dancing lessons. That's what we need. That's what we need. <laughs> Uh, but Paul, Paul uh, what a beautiful voice. Yeah, absolutely. Paul's a, Paul's a very cool guy. Uh, and, uh, yeah, check that out. Paul Hughes official. So uh, yeah. thank you, buddy. Appreciate it much. great time. Mm -hmm. All right, coming up, Mix It 3 continues. It's time to do some carb loading. We're running this time to the kitchen, however, uh, to learn a delicious recipe. You don't want to miss this. We'll be right back.
All right, welcome back to Mix It 3. Carb lovers, rejoice. October is National Pasta Month, all month long, as a matter of fact. Uh, today, boom, we're here. It's National Pasta, Pasta day. day. Exactly. So who better to celebrate this day with than our friend and our home chef, Jen Fiore, in her kitchen. Hey, Jen. Hi, Jen. <laughs> hey, guys. I could not be happier. National Pasta Day. Oh, I know, right? You just got to do this the entire day. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. So how are we going to celebrate, Jen? Exactly. <laughs> okay, guys. You know I always have to put a kick into something. So a baked ziti is the Italian version of mac and cheese, right? Right. That's, but I want to kick a, it up a little bit and give it some nutrients. So I'm going to call it green baked ziti. Okay? We're going to put some veggies in it. Oh, boy. So a pound of pasta cooked according to the directions, okay? And if you want this to be a faster meal, cook it. You don't have to leave it al dente, okay? So cook it but we don't want mush. Okay. Very fine line, we talked about that a week ago, right? So in here, I've already made half of it so you can see what I've done, but I, so basically, when you, what you're looking at is half the portion, so you're gonna have a big bowl of pasta, you're gonna have your regatta cheese and homemade sauce, and you mix that together, okay? Oh, yeah. And then you're gonna throw that right onto your pasta. Oh yeah. All right? That's it, scope regatta that out. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and your pasta. Then you're going to take your sautéed spinach and onions with a little bit of garlic powder and sea salt and throw that in. And frozen peas. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't defrost them. <laughs> Did you frozen hear that drop? Just yeah. start. Frozen peas. Okay. Done. Easy peasy. Mix that up. And you want that pasta to be all coated, okay? Okay. Nice and coated. Now... Everybody fights for the crunchies. So if you get a bigger dish for your pound of pasta, you're going to have more crunchies. Okay. 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 And this is a very key. I, this is something my grandmother taught me a long time ago. Whenever you bake in something, you always put down the sauce first. Always. That's, See, now that okay, makes That's going to help that pasta. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this sauce I'm using happens to be because my husband likes to have, you know, meatballs. So this is a meatball sauce. I got a whole bunch of chunks of meatball and steak in here. You could do whatever you want with your mac with your uh, big ziti. Okay. okay? Then we're gonna put our half of this mixture in here. Spread it out nice. Now again, if you have an entire pound on this, you're gonna have a lot of pasta. Okay, guys. Okay. But the next step is mozzarella cheese. So put Lots that on. Of it. Lots of cheese. Lots of Lots it. Lots of cheese. <laughs> Lots of cheese. And then you're going to repeat, okay? Then you, you would repeat your sauce layer. And then your, your veggies and pasta layer. Oh. Okay? Now, you could be done with this vegetable thing right here. You, say, you can say, Jen, that's enough veggies for me. Okay, I just Jen, want that's the enough gooey veggies. cheese. That's enough veggies for me. <laughs> Okay. okay, but Natalia, you're yes. preparing for your race. You want some extra. So now you're going to do, again, repeat the layer. Remember what I said? But we're topping it this time with our sauce. And then steamed broccoli. There you go. That's what I'm cooking. My okay. Okay. Well, no, that, that, that looks good. I like the yeah. steamed broccoli portion of it. Okay. And then your cheese. All the rest of the cheese right there. Beautiful. And when you put it in the oven uh -huh. at 306, uh, 375 degrees. For how long? That is what it's going to look like. Hey, and Aunt, let me show you what it looks like. How long do you put it in for at that uh, temperature? Oh, 20, 25 minutes. Okay. Not, you already have, everything is already cooked and steamed. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Ah. Looks so good. Now, I, I am <laughs> sure that the husband is just outside of the camera and waiting to Absolutely. pick that bowl up. Okay. <laughs> and and you, will, you can guarantee that the crunchies on the side of this dish are gone. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, bring it on. Them. Okay. You're going to have to uh, bring that recipe next time you come in here to our kitchen. Okay. Yes. I will. Okay. I will definitely do that. And I will I will put it up so everybody can make that this week in honor of National Pasta Day. Boom. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you I'm so ready much, to it. Yeah, thank you. And the meatballs are on page 136 of the cookbook. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Don't forget those as well. Uh, and by the way, it just happens to be gluten-free. Gluten-free. Gluten <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jen.
Thanks, guys. Have a great week. Oh, yeah. Thank you manja. so much, Jen. Oh, yeah. Manja. Manja. All right. Jen's Lachiner cookbook uh, this Thursday. It just happens to be gluten-free. It's really, really good. Check that out. Uh, you can get it on Amazon, or you can just check out our website at jenfiore. That's F-I-O-R-E dot com. Yes. All right. More to come here on Mix It 3. After the break, we'll get you the latest entertainment news from Hollywood and beyond. Stand by. It's coming up. On to entertainment news now. Dolly Parton is pitching in to help the Salvation Army this Thanksgiving. The country music legend will be performing at halftime of the Dallas Cowboys-Washington Commanders game. It's all part of the Salvation Army's Red Kettle Kickoff fundraiser. So Parton will bring the traditional Salvation Army holiday bell to jumpstart the holiday giving season. Cowboy fans are also hoping her performance will help them overcome a run of bad luck. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Last year's performance by the Jonas Brothers, well, that lifted the Cowboys to a 7-2 record when uh, big stars performed at halftime for them. Okay. Mm. Well, hey, give Dolly a try because, yes. uh, you know, I, I would love – she could do any show. Uh, and we, we, we said this this morning. And challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. You need to get Dolly on our show. <laughs> She's a sweet, I, I swear, I don't think I've ever, I know. I've never, and I mean this wholeheartedly, have never heard a bad thing about Dolly Parton. Same. I don't think mm -hmm. you can say that for many people. Yeah. But Dolly, you definitely yeah. could. Absolutely. But I heard the only way to contact her, guess, guess how, facts. Are you kidding? You cannot call her and cannot text her. Fax I her. think we have a fax machine still here at the TV station, so <laughs> we can try to check that out. Let me know, because I'm going to be reaching out to her. Keep it here to the music vibe. A musician, Alicia Keys, is explaining an Instagram message that's uh, drawn some criticism. Uh, the now removed post mentions paragliding and shows her wearing green. Okay, some people believe the post is a sign that Keys supports Hamas. So what? the group's flag is green and it used paragliders to attack Israel. Keys says the post was completely unrelated and adds she's praying for peace. Uh, you know what? If you if you're looking for trouble, you'll find it. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I don't I don't think Alicia was going that route. So yeah. But especially nowadays with social media, you have to be very careful oh. with what you post, especially public people like yeah. her. Exactly. Right. An Israeli American who used to be her manager is also speaking up for her too. Guy Osiri says the post was not meant to be anti-Semitic. He says Keys was horrified when she learned how some people interpreted it. Well, absolutely. Uh, no, no good for that at all. Uh, but, yeah, some things you cannot undo it yeah. sometimes. This time, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world, but, uh, yeah, she has to be careful, so especially. Can't, with... can't wear a green dress? <laughs> Okay, I guess no, that's the thing. Yeah. Hey, we're about to wrap up here, but uh, we want to say a very special happy birthday to our chief engineer here yes. at WRDW News 12, uh, Joe Skip McGee. Happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday. Glad happy to have you with day. us. Yes. News 12, first and four on the way with the latest news from our area, and we've got your uh, Investigate TV Plus. That's coming up next. All right, thanks for watching.